Hello everyone, it's Killian here and in this video I will show you the basics of Unity 5. This video expects you to have Unity 5.4.2 installed as this is the version I will be using throughout this tutorial series and also Vi Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition. I will be putting a download link to the Microsoft website to download 2015 Community for free in the video description. I'm also going to use C Sharp as the programming language, so if you do not know C Sharp yet, just stick with these videos and I will teach you the very basics you need to know to get started scripting in Unity, or you can view my full C Sharp tutorial series that I will create in January. So to get started, open up Unity and the project manager will open. We are going to create a new project by clicking on the new button. I'm just going to call it YouTube Tutorial. You can set your location also. And now we see we have two options to choose the Unity setting in. Either 3D or 2D. Setting one of these on will make it so that Unity, the Unity Scene Editor will be in a 3D 3-axis perspective mode or a 2D front view 2-axis perspective or rather in a orthographic mode. It's rather useful for 2D games like side-scrolling Mario games. For the asset package I'm not going to bother right now, so um, I'm going to add my asset package that I will need later on in the video, so you know how to do that if you already have a project or such. So stick that to 3D and then create project. Unity will create the appropriate files and it will open. So, at first glance we see several panels scattered over the window, with the first one being the hierarchy panel at the left here. This panel will show you every game object inside your scene, and a game object is the base object that can be contained inside your scene slash level slash game world. Moving to the right we have the scene view, which will show you the game world with all the game objects and their handlers. If you click on the top left button where it shows shaded, we can select different shading modes. Shading being the normal shading mode, wireframe being the wireframe mode, and shaded wireframe or also etched faces. Over here we can see some miscellaneous uh, settings with the most important one, the overdraw setting. If we choose that one, well, actually, you can't see anything here. But if we choose that one, which will uh, show you uh, how much the CPU needs to render certain pixels. Pixels that are rendered multiple times over are being shown in more of a redder color than their counter pixels. It's going to be uh, useful for. Um, Optimi optimizing our rendering process. So next to that we have the game view which will show you the uh, definitive game. If we open the stats button over here we can see that uh, we have some statistics. The main important ones where we are going to focus on are the CPU render thread, uh, CPU uh, thread time and the render thread time. Also important are the patches and the save by batching which will be used later on and also discussed in a later video. Next to it we have a asset store where you can download uh, multiple assets or complete projects for use in your own projects or games. Over here we have our inspector panel, which by selecting a certain game object in your scene will show all of its uh, components and or properties. We can see that we can uh, disable our game object for every game object in our scene. We can rename it. Uh, we have a tag that will be used for uh, later videos and also a layer. A component is basically a container which can hold either default Unity mechanics or, or your own mechanics through the form of script, with, 
to the form of scripts which can be either made in Unity script, a variant on JavaScript or C sharp. At the bottom over here we have the project panel which just shows you all of the folders and files inside the project asset folder. And then last we have the console window which will show you the uh, scripts errors and script logs. Pretty handy to debug errors out of your game. So for now I will just create the foundation for a simple game we will create in this series. An FPS shooter with all the basic mechanics made that every finished game needs. To add the first person functionality I will be using Unity's first person controller which is shipped alongside the installation in the form of a Unity package. To add this Unity package go to the top toolbar where it shows assets and then select the import package and here we see the default packages that Unity ships with. We are going to need the characters package. This window will basically show everything that's inside this package. For now it's just go to click on import. Once imported all of our needed files are inside the standard assets characters first person controller. And click on prefabs and here we see our FPS control prefab that we will that we are going to use. A prefab is essentially a game object from the scene view with all of its properties and components saved to a Unity editor file which you can make by just dragging your game object into the project pane and it will create set prefab. This way all of the game object settings are saved and you can instantiate or spawn as many of these as you like. So by just creating a, let's say, create empty game object, we add a component of audio source. And then we drag our game object inside the project pane. We created a prefab. So drag the first person controller inside your scene. For this I'm going to uh, decorate the scene a little bit by just going to uh, game object, 3D object and add a plane to be our ground. As you can see I'm using the transform component over here which will create uh, your position, your rotation and your scale. If I created a undesirable rotation like this, I can reset its, pos uh, its properties by going to the mechanical wheel over here and click on reset or either reset position or reset rotation. For this I'm just going to click on reset. Everything is set to its default state which is 0, 0, 0 on the rotation, 0, 0, 0 on the position. So position our FPS controller above our plane. Maybe add some hmm, gonna make the plane a little bit larger. Maybe add some 3D objects like a cube. It was in overdraw mode all the time. Um, so add another. Oh, I can just do a copy our cube over here by doing the keyboard shortcut of Control D, and it will copy or duplicate your object. Make the size a little bit larger, like this. And just for the sake of it, a sphere like that. So now everything is basically ready to test our game. 
We can do that by pressing on the little buttons over here, the first one being the play button, the middle one being the pause button, and the other one being the uh, go to the next frame button. Or we can also do the keyboard shortcut of Ctrl P and it will start your game. As you can see, we can walk around with the mouse and the respective keyboard shortcuts. So we have our So we can see we already have a pretty neat first person controller mechanic in our game. You can end the game by just clicking on uh, the button or doing Ctrl P again and it will stop your game. So this is the very basic of using Unity and so now you are ready to follow on to the next tutorials that will follow soon. So please like and subscribe if you want to learn more about Unity or C Sharp. And also, don't forget to leave a comment. Have a good one.